Hello, my name is Mustafa Cemacit. Welcome to this presentation on automatic modulation classification. Uh, actually, it's about the implementation, testing, and uh, real-time signal validation of a paper. In today's world, accurately identifying the type of modulation used in wireless communication is crucial. Uh, this presentation also explores how modulation classification techniques performs when tested with the real-world signals. Also, we will review the research, analyze the real-world data, and discuss some surprising findings. Uh, actually, this research aims to the put theory into practice. We want to see if the feature selection method proposed in the paper called Effective Feature Selection Method for Deep Learning Based Automatic Modulation Classification Seen Using High Order Statistics actually works well or not. We will compare how different feature selection methods and uh, classification algorithms uh, like neural networks and SVMs perform. We will also try to identify any limitations, especially when it comes to distinguishing between higher order QAM signals. And then I will finally uh, I will try to explain that what neural network model used in the paper, and I try to create an overview of uh, the neural network architecture inputs, outputs, and the training methodology used in the implementation. And let's take a closer look of the neural network that mentioned in the paper. This model uh, has an input layer with nine nodes representing nine features. It includes three hidden layers with progressively smaller node counts, uh, 40, 20, and 10. The output layer has five nodes corresponding to the five modulation types, PPSK, QPSK, 8PSK, 16QAM, and the 64QAM. The rectifier linear, linear unit ReLU activation function is applied in the hidden layers to introduce nonlinearity. The softmax function is used in the output layer to assign probabilities to each modulation class. The model was trained using 50,000 samples evenly distributed across all five modulation types. The training data consisted of uh, 450,000 features with 90,000 features each for validation and testing. Uh, it was trained for 200 epochs with a batch size of 64 utilizing backpropagation and gradient descent for optimization. Here is the all features calculated from higher order cumulants. However, in the feature selection method part uh, in the paper, it's mentioned that five specific features are chosen for each method. Uh, for my data set, at, at, uh, SNR is greater than 10 dB, so I choose these higher order cumulants uh, for training and testing. And here is the real field data set of mine. Uh, I have 2,530 samples, which means that the 22,770 feature for trained and 515 samples for test. And here is the distributions of classes. And uh, to ensure all samples uh, reside within the same feature space, a pre-processing stage is applied. This involves resampling all IQ signals to 48 kilohertz and uh, correcting the frequency errors. The signal is raised to the 8th power of and take Fourier transform of it. This process generates a peak in the frequency domain at eight times of the original error. Then I corrected the frequency error and divide samples into one second segments. And uh, here are the results. Uh, and we have the performance conversion of neural network and support vector machine when using all nine features together. Uh, let's start with the neural network on the left. The green cells along the diagonal represents correct classification, so you can see it performed very well for most classes. Uh, for instance, class 1 had 100 correct predictions and class 2 achieved 105 correct ones. However, there were a few misclassifications like six, like six cases of class 4 being identified as class 5.
and uh, now moving to support vector machine on the right it also performed decently with 100 correct predictions for class one and 104 class two but you will notice it struggled more with class four and class five for example 38 instances of uh, class four were misclassified as class five and uh, 17 instances of class five were identified as class four overall the neural network achieved a higher accuracy of 94 percent uh, compared to svm which is 88 percent uh however i uh let me mention that uh, svm was faster in processing so if speed is critical factor it might still be viable option uh but for the accuracy the neural network is the clear winner here and uh let uh take a close look at the feature selections of uh, the authors proposed. The first feature selection method of the conventional method. So uh, when we compare to two popular classification algorithms, neural network and the support vector machine, the confusion matrix has provided a detailed breakdown of how well each model performed on our test data set. As you can see, the neural network achieved an overall accuracy of 89%, uh, while the support vector machine came in at uh, 86%. While both models performed well, the neural network seems to have a slight edge in terms of overall accuracy. However, it's important to note that the support vector machine struggle with the classifying class four again here. When uh, we check the second selection method, the mutual information, this uh, is the comparison of the neural network and the support vector machine. We can see that the both models have performed well on the classification task with the neural network achieving a uh, slightly higher accuracy, like 88%, compared to the support vector machine. Uh, while both models perform well overall, there are some differences in the performances across different classes. For example, the neural network seems to be better at classifying class 3, while the support vector machine struggles a bit with class 4. Uh, uh, actually, this slide presents the results of a classification experiment using a uh, neural network and uh, SVM uh, with the proposed method of the authors uh, that is mentioned in the paper. Uh, the performance actually uh, achieved a reasonable level of accuracy, but you know, it's a little bit less performance when uh, we came to this selection method. And uh, both models seem to struggle with classifying classes two and three, indicating that these classes might be more similar, maybe. And uh, actually, In the paper, uh, this was the feature selection method recommended by the author, you know. Uh, it shows the best performance in the paper, but in my case, it is showed that the worst performance uh, with the field signals. And uh, let's make a conclusion. Uh, as you can see from the results, there's a noticeable gap between the performance of the neural network model, uh, you know, in the simulation environment and the uh, real world data. The authors claim that their proposed feature selection method yielded excellent results, but our experiments uh, show that 
the opposite. When we applied their method to our real world data set, we found that it unperformed, underperformed compared to the uh, other methods uh, from the literature conventional way and uh, the mutual information way. There is a difference between the theoretical model and the experimental result, as I said. Also, the neural network model and the SVM is failed to distinguish higher order QAMs. Uh, also, we can say that. Uh, however, you know, uh, if the computational speed is, uh, you know, uh, the crucial, uh, SVM can be uh, chosen for the task because, you know, in my code, uh, SVM uh, works very, very, very fast when we compare it to the uh, neural network case. And thank you for listening to me. Uh, this is uh, my uh, EE583 project uh, presentation. Thank you for listening.